Today, we're gonna to be talking about the real reasons I left the United States of America. Oh shit, I guess it's really happening. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the real reason why I left the United States of America. Now, the reason I'm making this video before we get started is because as you guys can see here, yeah, these are the stats for a very similar video that I made way back when in around, uh, I wanna say I made it somewhere like in October of last year. So this, this video, by the way, I'm gonna show the video in the back right now. Pretty cool green screen situation here. But anyways, all right. So this video that I'm playing right here in the back at the moment uh, is uh, has been the most popular video on my channel since March. Since, you know, March of 2020, since this whole thing blew up and got all crazy. Um, and like I said, here are the stats again, so you guys can see real quick, you know, um, you know, just how popular this video is. So because of that, I, you know, have, I'm making this video. It's like kind of like a follow-up of it, all right? Now, as you guys saw what the title of that video was, you know, it was very similarly titled, you know what I mean? Uh, why did I leave, you know, um, the US? You know what I mean? What were the reasons and all this other stuff? And uh, in that video, I, again, you know, I'm gonna link it at the end of this one, uh, but in that video, I talk about um, many reasons as to why I left. And, you know, I talked about many reasons, but, um, I was never expecting any kind of insanity that we're experiencing here at the moment. Um, and as, again, you know, welcome all you new viewers out there, all right? Um, again, we're gonna be talking about, I got a whole list of whole reasons, you know, a lot of reasons as to why I left, why I'm glad I left, and we're gonna be talking and dissecting all that, and again, and uh, trying to answer and help you guys, you know, uh, in leaving, you know, wherever you are. It doesn't have to be the US. So we're gonna be going through all that in today's episode. Um, but before we do, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, where we're at right now, in, 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 in case it wasn't obvious, um, 2020 has been an insane year. Um, as I record this, the elections are still not over. In fact, you know what I mean, we're just two weeks away from the elections, but we know that this is only going to ramp up to the next level. All right. We haven't even started anything yet. All right. This is only getting started you know, right now. It's like the little lull before the hurricane. So, you know, just as I'm making this video right now um, and they got uber popular a few months later when the shit really hit the fan, um, I'm guessing that this one's going to be something similar. All right. And uh, we're going to start talking about again, like, you know, and dissecting every reason, uh, you know, as to why I'm here and uh, why you guys are looking for a way out, are looking for a way to get out of here as well, because guys, like, like, you know, as you guys already know, as you guys can already feel, you know, um, unless you're on the ultra right or the ultra left and you guys are you know following one doctrine or the other um you know most of you guys 90 percent of you guys fall right in the middle again it, this pertains to everybody out there no matter what country you're in and that's dealing with a lot of uh turmoil and, and, and strife uh, because of uh, either the virus situation or an economic situation or many other reasons all right me personally i live out here in mexico and for anyone out there that's interested about what it is for an expat to, to be living in Mexico and, uh, you know, and wants a whole treasure trove of information on living in Mexico, check out this channel and check out my travel channel where you can see plenty of footage like what you're watching right here, right now. Um, that, you know, like I said, I, I upload a lot of videos to this channel, a lot of videos to, to the travel channel, and I got two more channels. That's four total. All right, enough talking about me. Let's get back to what we were discussing here, which was what were the, re you know, the reasons for me to, for, for me escaping. So as we talked about, you know, early on in the, the beginning of the intro, as you guys saw, like right here, I mean, you know, uh, this is, you know, when, when I was first uh, thinking about this or talking about this many years ago, I, you know, I just thought that, yeah, this is, was a reality, a possibility, but we were so far away from that. You know what I mean? There's no way. Then 2020 came along <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, you know what I mean? Wait a minute, we're just a few months away or we're just right around the corner. And a lot of you guys can feel that. And you know, that's why you guys are watching not just this video, but so many other videos on my channel, you know, literally talking about this, okay? Um, 
So let's get into it because I wrote a bunch of notes. Let's start going down the notes, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is, like I said, I'm gonna be talking about all kinds of things, everything from, uh, you know, why I came out here. You know what I mean? Again, freedom, liberty, cost of living, quality of life, um, you know, uh, running away from something, not running away from something, whatever, you know, all these things. You know, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, we wanna escape. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about each thing in depth, okay? So just to, you know, give you guys a little heads up, all right? Just in case you see me, you know, ranting and dragging on for a while. For some of you guys that have been watching me for a while, you guys already know the deal. For some of you new viewers, again, sit tight. Let's get into it. All right, so, as you guys already know, everyone is escaping right now while they can, while they can. If you got any kind of resources, any kind of, uh, you know, financial um, stability, any any kind of way in which, uh, you know, you got your passport and so on and so forth, you, you, you're you desperately trying to get out. Um, and you're a lot of you guys are finding out that Mexico is basically the only country that's open and there's only a few countries that are open here and there. But um, the ones that you would might that you might want to go to, they have the same situation as the US and then the ones that you don't want to go to well you already know the deal and uh, there's only a hand you know most countries are closed off to Americans and Europeans at the moment as far as I understand uh, because of the virus situation um, and you know that, that goes to show you you know what I mean a lot of the things that I was talking about in, in the first video that I made a year ago talking about this is the fact that we're gonna come to a point in time in which you're not gonna be able to leave you're not gonna be able to escape it's too late you're done it's over and uh, we're getting very very close to that in fact you know a lot of you guys already feel that you're stuck and you're never going to be able to leave but a lot of you guys already know that the time is ticking and that uh you know the, you, again you know time is very finite and in any minute any moment things can change and you might not be able to escape or leave all right and you know things are getting scary so um but the, you know let, let's go into the reasons let's go into the reasons real quick as to why you out there you know well first of all i'm gonna tell you the reasons i left the reasons i'm out here um but and again you know they're gonna be very similar to probably a lot of the reasons you know why you are looking into leaving um so first of all freedom and liberty all right freedom and liberty simple as that you know what i mean um when i first left the u.s i was looking for more freedom and more liberty um why because um, I was a good citizen. I paid all my taxes. I did, you know, everything I was supposed to, you know, worked. I did everything. I did everything I was supposed to. And, uh, you know, one day, you know, as I was traveling through another part of the country, um, I was traveling through Texas, you know, I got stopped. I got arrested. And before you knew it, my whole world, my whole world changed. My whole world, you know, uh, literally flipped upside down, you know, and that whole thing. And um, it wasn't good. It was not good. And so a lot of you guys out there, you know, can, uh, uh, you know, again, you guys can relate to this. And uh, a lot of you guys are probably going through the same thing or went through a similar thing out there um, at some point. And um, that's kind of like where we're at right now. You know what I mean? Where a lot of people out there are, are, are either facing jail time or know somebody that's in jail. Or, you know, um, if you do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, act the wrong way, whatever. You know, again, you know, there's so many, the reason there's so many laws and regulations and, and rules and all these things is because that way they have total control over you and they can put you in jail at any given time for any given thing. And you know that because you're living through it right now. All right. So, you know, with all that being said, um, you know, it's for freedom and liberty. The fact that, you know, no matter what color your skin is, you know what I mean? Uh, you want to be able to walk down the street, uh, you know, and, and not fear of uh, getting arrested. All right. For any infraction. Now, I know some of you guys have no fear of that and never encountered that. Um, I, I, I was one of those guys until, like I said, you know, I traveled all across the US, I traveled through the wrong area, and before I knew it, my life changed, all right? And I lost everything I owned, and I mean, again, I probably would have been better off if, if I would have been, I probably would have been better off if, if I would have been married with three kids and got a divorce, honestly, you know what I mean? But hey, it is what it is. At least I got my freedom, and at least I was able to, you know, again, make it out here. But it wasn't an easy journey, all right, for a lot of you guys that know. Um, and I'm, and again, this is why I'm making this video for because 99% of you guys fall into a very similar situation where it's not easy. Some of you guys out there, not 99%, that might be a little high. But again, a good majority of people out there um, want to leave. You guys have been wanting to leave 
for a very long time and have not been able to or know how or don't anything. You know what I mean? You guys are just thinking, oh my God, you know, there's no way I can leave from my little shithole town in the middle of Alabama or, you know, again, you know, Montana or wherever the fuck you are. You know what I mean? Or if you're like in a big city and again, you know what I mean? You're just, you know, a payment away from being on the street. You know, missing a payment, you know, one payment missing away, What you know what I'm saying? Just missing one payment and you're on the street. You're in that situation and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of people out there in various, in, in various situations where, you know, now they're seeing the helicopter money that's coming through the US, you know, um, through the stimulus, uh, universal basic income, you know, um, unemployment, whatever money you're getting and you guys are thinking to yourself, well, this might be the only chance I get the only you know whatever but a lot of you guys are afraid a lot of you guys have no idea um, what to do and how to do it and um, again this is why we're gonna be making this video because when I first came out here you know what I mean like I said I you know got in a situation with the law in Texas I was trying to battle that you know and exhausted all my funds in the US and to the point where I had negative funds and it was either a you know um, end up on the street B end up in jail or C get the fuck out and that's what i did i got the fuck out and when i got out that was the best decision i ever made because as soon as i was able to you know um make it out to another country all of a sudden i was able to deal with my legal troubles a lot easier because they didn't have the leverage of i'm gonna put you in jail i'm gonna this i'm gonna you know i'll do all these horrible things in fact once once i got out of here and again for a petty crime petty crime you know what i mean again they caught me all right with a controlled substance you know some weed so we are in Texas, okay? And as you guys already know what's up with all that, all right? So um, that's what happened, all right? Um, and um, because, again, you know what I mean? It was never, uh, you know what I mean? There was no verdict ever at the end of that. And again, you know this already, you know, they, you get arrested and then uh, for they'll, they'll make up a charge and then it's up to you and your money and your lawyers and your everything and your funds and your every single thing that you have to fight for your freedom and battle for your freedom, all right? Similar situation, all right? And that's what happened to moi, all right? Anyways, so like I said, you know, I was already almost done dealing with that situation. I was living in California, and all of a sudden, I was just a few payments away, almost done with it, dealing with it, and then they were just threatening me and threatening me. We're gonna put you in jail, you better do this, you better sign that, you better whatever. And it was just getting worse and worse. And so my legal my legal counsel actually told me, hey, uh, have you, and my legal counsel in LA said, hey, have you thought about leaving the country? And at that point I said, it's time to get the fuck out. And um, before that, all right, I had already, been, when I first got in trouble in Texas, I, I was thinking to myself, man, maybe I should leave now. I didn't leave because of friends and family and all this other external pressure. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I ended up leaving anyway. And uh, the best decision I ever made. Because back when I left, you know, I was just at that moment in time, wanting just my freedom and liberty and i came out here for my freedom and liberty once i was out here in mexico and by the way a lot of countries are very similar but once i was out here in mexico i realized oh shit, wait a minute this is real freedom and liberty holy crap this is real freedom not only was i free from what's going on in the u.s but i was literally free like free you guys hear me talk about it in my videos all the time about the freedom and liberty that i have out here or that you have living abroad okay and so with that being said um as 2020 progressed and 2020 started becoming a thing you know what i mean and we started going march going forward all of a sudden all of a sudden um things just went crazy and um, as things got crazier and crazier in fact where we are now where we're at you know pretty fucking crazy but we still have a lot more crazy to get to we're in late october right before the elections in the u.s um i realized holy crap you know what i mean that freedom and liberty that i was seeking it, it, it was even more than what i could have ever imagined or thought of because as everything progressed i realized like oh my god look at all of my look at all my friends look at all my look at all my compadres look at all my other people that i know that are from they're living in europe living in australia living in, in some states in the u.s living all over the the world in these first world countries and how they are you know basically right now um again here this is the best thing i can show you, you know what i mean like right here as you guys can see you know what i mean the whole fema camp situation in one shape form or another this is what's going on all right and uh 
when I when I'm here in Mexico or again or any for any any country, there's a lot of countries. Again, like I said, if you you know you don't have to even learn Spanish or anything. You can go to Eastern Europe. You can go to India. You can go to Africa. There's a bunch of places where this is not going to happen. All right, or if it does gonna if it does happen, it's not going to be for a very 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 long time, many many decades. But if you're in China, if you're in Australia, if you're in many parts of Europe, if you're in the U.S., if you're in Canada, if you're in you already know what country because you know you're the country you're, you're most likely looking at me you know if you're watching this video you're probably from watching this video from one of those countries anyways that is a reality this is like a thing this is going to happen this is happening in, in different levels okay and so, you know some countries are they're a little bit more accelerated than others but at the end of the day we're in the same you know you guys are all in the same boat and the u.s is no different don't get it twisted okay again it does not matter it will not matter who gets elected okay Shit is it's already hit the fan, okay? It really doesn't matter who's gonna get elected because whoever gets elected, they're gonna throw the opposite side in these FEMA camps, in these internment camps, in these re-education camps, or some shape, form, or, or something like that, all right? If it's Trump, he's gonna throw all the Antifa, lefty people, all that shit, they're gonna be going straight into, into, you get what I'm saying, into one of these camps. If it's, uh, you know, Biden in the left, I mean, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? If they got to take over, I mean, you already know. They're coming straight, you know, for the um, ultra right. In fact, they're probably coming, if the, if the left wins are coming, if the left wins are coming for all of you. And you guys know that because they're bringing communism and you already know what comes with communism. Uh, every, equal for everybody. So that means we're all going to jail because, you know, we all fucked up in the eyes of, uh, you know, uh, communism or whatever. And so again, and it's funny because you, you hear, you know, the typical lefty talk about, uh, you know, um, the fact that they're, they're never gonna bring communism, that the left is never, is not communist and you're insane and you're crazy. And the same thing with the right, you know, the right saying is like, oh my God, you know, uh, you know, we're bringing ultimate freedom and liberty, but we all know that that's the complete opposite with all this law and order, with all this, uh, all these new um, uh, legislation that has been passed, you know, through 2020, you know, mainly the, the Defense Protection Act. I mean, again, look up the Defense Protection Act and you tell me if that's uh, communist or not. You know the bailouts. You know what I mean. The, all the money that has been printed, and um, it's 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 uh, continually it continuing to lose value as each day progresses, and so on and so forth. Um, I mean, again, I'm so happy, so glad that I'm here, that I have been able to escape. All right, um, that I escaped ahead, okay, of, of the game. That I was able to leave over two and a half years ago, and now I sit here. Pretty. I sit here very happy, very content that I finally, you know, was able to, you know, make that decision many years ago. Um, even though that decision, in a sense, was almost made for me because I was at the, I was up against the wall. I was basically up against the wall. I had no other choice, you know what I mean, but to leave. And again, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I think a lot of you guys are right now in that same position where almost all of you guys that are watching this video right now are up against the wall and you guys have absolutely no other choice but to leave. And you guys have absolutely no idea how you're gonna leave, especially now. Because as I was, me and so many others have been sounding the warnings you know, the, the, the warning bells and this and everything, you know, for you to leave, for you to get your passport, for you to get, you know, all of the things that you need to get ready in order to get out, nobody was listening. And now that it's too late, well, not too late, but we're almost there, you're almost at too late. Now everybody, everybody is begging to get out. And as everybody is now squeezing, you know, running towards the exit and squeezing, you know, towards the one little door exit, all right, well, everybody's squeezing through there. Let me show you. Everyone's squeezing to, to get through this door right here. Um, it's gonna get very, very, very difficult, okay? So, uh, but we, you can still get out, okay? So we're gonna be discussing a little bit more of that in a second. So as everybody squeezes for the exits, it's only gonna keep getting harder and harder. Again, like I said, from the very, very beginning, many years ago, that wall that he is building is to keep you guys in. And just like all over the United States of America, yeah, I mean, all over the world, you know, like I said, Europe, Australia, what have you, they've already instilled many measures to keep you guys in. And a lot of these measures, you know, they came about because of the virus, you know, as you guys already know, because of the virus now, um, you can't even get on a plane. You can't leave the country. You got to quarantine. You got to this, you got to. So again, they're making it more and more and more difficult as each day progresses. And uh, do you think that it's going to get easier? You better not. You <clears throat> 
Come on now. You already know. You already know where we're going with this, okay? But um, I'm going to go through a few reasons, okay, why it's so much better, in case you haven't already figured it out, um, to be out of your country at the moment um, than it is to remain there. So, again, freedom and liberty, which we already discussed at length, uh, cost of living, um, quality of life, you know, all these go together, you know, um, again, when you have more freedom and liberty and you, and life is just better every, you know, like um, on a just regular daily basis, um, your quality of life increases. As things are a lot cheaper, um, quality of life increases. By the way, let me answer a quick question because so many people always ask me, oh, but how do you live abroad? How can I live? I, whatever, I work at XYZ job. There's no way that I can do. Listen, get a job online. Just get a fucking job online. And now more than ever, everybody's working online. Okay, okay and make US dollars or euros or Canadian dollars, whatever, something like that, and you're gonna be sitting pretty. You only need about $1,000 to live basically anywhere, you know, that's a third world country type of thing. This is not even a third world country, this is a second world country, so you know, like right in the middle. So, come on, all right? Get a job online, all right? Get creative, okay? You could be all kinds of things, okay? Literally, now more than ever, okay? I'm not even gonna get too deep into this one because, you know, I feel like this is a moot point at this, at this point, but I still get that same question asked over and over again. It's like, come on now, give me a break. Get a job online, work, okay? Get a VPN, um, make sure you got a US bank account, whatever, a bank account from your previous country, which you're gonna need anyway, which is another, you know, um, situation because when you're living abroad, you know, one of the things that you realize is that you're still not completely free. You need to keep a bank account. You need to pay your taxes, especially as an American citizen. You need to constantly be checking in with uh, your country. Now, you know, I already know how the rules work. I already know how all this works. So I check in, I do my taxes. I'm not completely off the grid. Again, I make YouTube videos all the time. They know where I live. They know where I am. I spend a good majority of my time here, but it doesn't mean that I'm here all the time. I go to the US. I'm, you know, again, my family is in Miami and Florida. I'm, I still get work okay from the u.s and then that whole thing so it's, it's all about that um you guys can figure it out okay when it comes to taxes when it comes to business when it comes to corporations and what you can do on your end in order to facilitate that even further okay because you know um i declare my taxes and i do all my taxes exactly like the way you know you're supposed to and i'm okay all right you understand um we can discuss that further at length but at the end of the day you just got to declare you got to make sure that you let them know where you are again they already know where you are so just um do the paperwork and when you do the paperwork you don't got nothing to worry about you know they they are more than happy to have americans living abroad if you follow me you get what i'm saying so that's not a problem at all don't be thinking that it is it's not the u.s really doesn't care they prefer to have you in the u.s but if you're going to be abroad well you know there's just some rules and regulations you gotta follow. But as long as you follow them, you're good to go. Now, for some of you guys, look, at one point, I wanted to renounce my US citizenship and I wanted to do a lot of things like that, but I've come to my senses for now, you know what I mean? And I realized that I don't necessarily have to do that. I'm totally fine right now. If that becomes a, a real burden, then I can go about the steps to do that. Um, you know, even though that's also gonna get harder and harder every day. Um, but regardless, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not worried about that, you know what I mean? You need to just worry about what you need to do in order to make your life a lot better right now. And that's it, and that's, that's seriously. And so, you know, if, you're, if you remain in the US, things are not gonna get easier, they're only gonna get harder. Um, just like, you know, the, the lighting for today's episode, I'm, you know, you have no idea how bright the sun is, uh, but again, it's all good. Um, but <laughs> hopefully it's not affecting too much the whole green screen situation I'm trying to do here and set up for you guys to make a better episode. But, you know, let's let's get into, you know, the whole thing. You know, obviously the cost of living is going to be a lot cheaper um, basically anywhere else but the first world country that you're in. Um, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada or Australia or Europe, whatever, you know what I mean? It's just going to be more expensive there. As opposed to, like, if you're in Europe and you're living, like, I don't know, in some Eastern European country, you're going to be paying about the same as I'm paying here in Mexico coming from the U.S. or Canada. You follow? So it's the same thing. You know, same thing as if you want to go to Africa, certain places there, or, or East Asia. I mean, or, what is it? Southeast Asia or any one of those places. There's tons of places around the world that, again, speak your language whatever language that is um whether it's spanish french english okay find that country go live there and enjoy your life stop thinking about it so many people so many people are constantly living towards retirement even right now as we're living in towards this insanity or towards all this shit that's going on right now um 
you know, so many people are still like trying to save up for retirement, trying to, you know, get to their retirement, retirement, retire, you know, all this shit. I'm like, bro, are you fucking kidding me right now? You know what I mean? Like, look what we are right now with the with everything in the world. So, um, you know, the whole thing about retirement is, is that like uh, you can be living your retirement right now, no matter what your age is. OK, what does that mean? Anyone out there, no matter what your job is, OK, as you're working cluck, 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 and you're daydreaming about whatever, um, a lot of you guys want to be in a tropical weather. You know, what I mean? you just want to be in like some whatever you guys have some sort of vision of what you would want to be doing during your retirement. Well, instead of waiting towards those retirement years to do these things that, you know, most likely you want to be doing when you're young and, and healthy as I am, as you are right now, um, again, why don't you just switch it around and uh, start living your retirement now? I live my fucking retirement, all right? I, I know plenty of people that live their retirement. Start living your fucking retirement, meaning that you are, re you're living the retired life now, all right? You know, that you can go to the beach whenever you want, you can wake up whenever you want, you can do all these things whenever you want. In fact, you can do whatever you want. But the reason most of you guys can't do that is because you guys are live in a country where you guys have to make so much money just to make ends meet. Well, you, you can't have that kind of freedom, all right? Out here, again, I, I have a job, okay? Like, all of us have a job, but it's just a whatever job, you know what I mean? Like, it's under 40 hours a week. And with that under 40 hour a week job, I got more than enough to live the life I want to live, to live the retirement I want to live, okay? And, uh, you know, most people, you get what I'm saying? They're working 80 hours a week and, you know, retirement. You get what I'm saying? Like, uh, living, you know, vacation, you know what I mean? You can't, you don't need, that's not even a thing. Um, and, uh, you know, now more than ever, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have realized that during, you know, the whole, uh, you know, quarantine situation, just the last six months and so on and so forth that, you know, I'm sure you guys have done a lot of thinking, a lot of realizing, and uh, that's why you guys, again, are watching this video. And again, let me remind you, watching the other video, okay? This is why I'm making this video as a follow-up to this video that I made over a year ago, all right? And at first, you know, just a few people were watching it, but it wasn't until March of 2020, in which when the shit really hit the fan that everybody, as you guys can see, started watching this video. And it's continuing to watch this video. It is very, very popular. Um, so this is why I decided to make this video because, you know, we, we need a, a modern version of this because, you know, in that video, I was telling you guys to get a passport. Now, it might not be so easy, all right? So again, you need to start working on that. If you don't got a passport, you, you, you know, you ain't going nowhere, all right? Um, so you gotta start working at the very least uh, the passport. And uh, you know, a lot of the insane, crazy things that I used to talk about and a lot of people have talked about, like I said, whether it was the FEMA camps, you know, whether it was Civil War, whether it was World War III, you know, all of these things are on the table. They're all a fucking reality. They're right in front of us. I mean, are you fucking kidding me right now? Um, and so, um, you know, right now, like the major discussion is uh, in the US at least, uh, and I'm sure in a lot of fucking places around the world is, uh, you know, is are we going into World War Three or are we going into our, our revolution? You get what I'm saying? Is it, this is a revolution or or World War Three or a civil war or you know something like that? Okay, and it, it, it's just all over the world right now. Um, a lot of places around the world are going through starvation and uh, and and uh, and not having even enough water to drink right now because of uh, everything that's happening. Plus, on top of that, you know, the, all these natural disasters. And again, 2020. It's just been a disaster, period, for most people out there, for most of the world. And, um, you know, right now in places, you know, like China, you know what I mean? There's a lot of mass starvation, mass hunger, mass, there's a lot of mass things going on over there. Just like, you know, we're going uh, to no matter what country you're in right now. Again, a lot of, uh, if you go to Australia, you know, um, you're getting arrested, you know, just for, uh, I don't know, having an anti-mask uh, uh, march, you know, set up on, on Facebook, okay? Whatever, you, you know what I'm saying. You know, people are just getting arrested left and right uh, for speaking their mind, for trying to, you know, I don't know, go and uh, go against these, you know, um, go against yeah, some of these anti-constitutional laws, some of these virus regulations that have been really, really messing everything up, okay? Um, to the point of like, again, you know, using these, uh, you know, using the, the excuse of, um, you need to get out? Using the excuse, yeah, you just, you know, walk out the door. Um, it'll be fun. Using the excuse of the virus in order to get, you know, them to take away all of your rights. You feel me? So, all right, here, let's see if you guys can take. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Anyways, and she's uh, going for a little bike ride around. So anyways, let's keep, uh, let's stay on topic here. So, um, Segwaying into that, to go a little bit more of that, you know, um, again, the freedom and liberty out here. Um, again, it, it, the harassment from the police, you know what I mean? Again, as we were just talking about, you know what I mean, briefly, um, the, the police, you know, are being used to harass citizens now for not complying with some of these virus rules instead of, you know what I mean, like actually stopping crime. In a lot of places, especially in the U.S., you know what I mean, the cops have stopped being cops, you know, like meaning no more crime stopping, no more stopping rapes, no more stopping, you know, no more doing cop jobs. Now, in fact, what we're going to be doing now is that we're going to start ramping up, giving you guys uh, traffic violations. We're going to ramp up, uh, giving you now all of a sudden these uh, mask violations. We're going to start ramping up, uh, you know, um, putting you in jail for, you know, social distancing, whatever the fuck. All right. And, um, and it's just getting worse and worse. And so at least in the U.S., you know, we have the Second Amendment in which we can, uh, you know, kind of like push back a little bit. But in a lot of places around the world, again, like in Australia, as I was trying to stay, as I was, I was trying to say earlier before I started mumbling and stuff, was the fact that, like, again, you know, you, you know, there's plenty of evidence of plenty of people, uh, namely um, this lady that was a pregnant lady that put on Facebook, hey, let's uh, have a, a, a ma an anti-mask uh, protest or something like that. Something like that. It doesn't matter. Just something, all right? Just, uh, hey, let's meet up, okay? Let's meet up in the park, Facebook post. Anyways, the cop showed up to her house and arrested her, all right? And we're seeing many, many, many things like that, okay? Where again, you know, um, we're seeing rioters in the US burn down all kinds of buildings and they get released immediately. And you're seeing people protecting their property from said rioters going to jail. What the hell? So. You know, again, you know, um, there's very little harassment from government and police out here. Um, the, again, the most I ever get, which it only happened at the very beginning of the pandemic, right? But the, the most I really ever got, you know, was, um, hey, can you put your mask on? And I got a little discussion and tuffle, you know what I mean? Like discussion, you know what I mean? With the police officer and back and forth. And basically I would just put it on in order to just end the conversation. But as soon as they would go a little further, I would take it off and that's it. And that would be the end of that. And as of where I sit now, they cannot enforce anything because out here, the constitution, which is very similar to the US's, um, again, does not allow them to, you know, um, break the constitution with illegal mandates and laws to um, impose on the people. You know what I mean? Again, you know, they can't, they can stop, they cannot stop you out here for an, do an illegal search and seizure. They cannot, you know, by the way, they can do all of these things, but I'm just saying it's a, uh, it comes at a very high price, you know, to the person, the police officer doing these things, but you know, they can't just like arrest you and ticket you for not wearing your mask. They can't just do all of these things. And uh, for the poor soul out there that actually gets in trouble with the local police or anything like that, again, they can easily fight this in court and get the charges knocked off again. You already know how this works. The poorer you are, the more difficult it is. But um, again, you know, me as an American citizen out here in Mexico, I got no worries. In fact, like just like being an American citizen, most places around the world, you got nothing to worry about. Same as, you know, most first world countries. You guys are pretty safe, especially in a place, you know, like this. And why? You know what I mean? Because again, not only um, do the constitution pertain to the citizens, but it pertains to us as well. And especially if we come from a first world country, um, that we actually do have, you know, the means in order to fight some sort of unconstitutional, illegal mandate. You know what I mean? Like if I, were, if I all of a sudden I were to get arrested for not wearing my mask, at the end of it, I walk away with the police station. Okay? That kind of insanity, okay? Now like in the US, you know what I mean? In the US, you already know. It's very different, all right? Just sprinkle some crack on them type of shit, you know what I mean? But anyways, so, you know, the, the whole situation when it comes to that is, is my God, you know what I mean? It's so, such a difference out here. And again, you get to really see it now during this pandemic because the cops out here never, ever, 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 ever really had any power. And they've only had a little bit of power now because of the pandemic. But even then, again, it's nothing in comparison to what's happening in your country right now. And you know this, all right? I mean, seriously. Um, and if you don't, you know it now, all right? I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, you know, again, you know, um, one of the main reasons why a lot of you guys want to, are looking to get out of there and, you know, leave the U.S. and be out here is because, you know, you have realized that a lot of things that I've said and a lot of people have been saying for a long time have actually come true. And either A, you're digging in your heels even further and refusing to want to leave, or B, you're now, you know, hey, down scrambling and trying to figure out the fastest way to get the hell out of Dodge. 
And uh, you know, a lot of you guys are finding out that yeah, you can still escape and have been able to escape. And a lot of you guys have been finding out again, this all depends on the state and the country that you're in. And a lot of you guys have been finding out that it's been almost impossible um, or very difficult for you to leave. So, um, you know, the harsh reality has hit you guys that it's already been, it's for some of you guys, it's too late, but there's a good majority of people out there where you guys can still get out. And um, you know, it's not to say that, you know, in the near future, in the next year or two or three, you know, you're gonna be able to get out easy you, you know that things are going to open up more things are going to get better and all these other things but then at that point you know what i mean you're going to have to have um so you're going to have to jump through so many more hoops you're going to have to have even more um paperwork and you're going to have to go through more rules and regulations it's going to just be even more difficult in the future for you to leave. So again, it's not to say that you still can't leave and you're not gonna be able to leave in the future for sure, but it's just gonna keep getting increasingly difficult as time goes on. And again, if, if you still don't believe me at this point, I don't know what else to tell you, but most of you guys have already, you know, pretty much come to that conclusion and come to that realization um, what the reality is and what's going on with all that. So, you know, another reason, you know, why I left, you know what I mean, was the fact that, you know, in the US, you know what I mean, the fact that like, um, you know, your health, you know what I mean, does not matter. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle with your health on a daily basis, you know, meaning that, you know, um, the air is poisoned, the water is poisoned, the food is poisoned, the doctors give you poison, and, and, you know, and so on and so forth. Because again, if you go through any kind of natural medicine, any kind of like real home remedy, anything that's like, I don't know, old, traditional ancient medicine, oh my God, that is the devil in the US. You can't even think about having that kind of a solution. You gotta go through their solution, what Big Pharma provides for you. But all of a sudden, once you leave the US, you realize like, oh, wait a minute, this is what clean air is like. You know, again, not everywhere, but you know, the majority of the world out there. Um, oh my God, this is what clean air is like. Oh my God, this is clean water. Oh my God, this is, uh, clean food and the clean food that I could just buy at the regular supermarket. I don't got to go to a special fancy organic market and pay $17,000 for one ounce of steak. No, you know what I mean? Like out here, it's, you know, almost everything is organic in one way or the other. And most places around the world uh, that are like, or Mexico or again, you know, Africa, you know, um, the Philippines, you know, and a lot of places in Southeast Asia, a lot of places in Eastern Europe, a lot of places in Latin America where things are just fresh, where things are just uh, organic, you know, by default, okay? You know what I mean? Like, and so, you know, all of these things, <clears throat> you know, combined with less stress, combined with better sleep, combined with, uh, you know, um, the fact that you can, uh, again, you know, the stress that comes from all the loss of freedom and liberty, or the fact that you can lose your freedom and liberty at any moment in time in the US, the fact that you don't have that over your head anymore, it's, it's again, it's such a huge stress reducer. And once you're out here and you start realizing all that, you know what I mean, once you're, again, you know, like if you've ever been on vacation abroad or anything like that, and you were like, oh my God, this is so awesome, so amazing, and uh, I feel so free and liberated. Well, imagine feeling like that 24 hours a day, 365 days a year forever. Okay, that's what, because again, during the whole pandemic, everything that happened during 2020, I was not worried. I was not anything, you know what I mean? Like I was just more like, oh my God, this is actually happening. All of this is actually happening. Every single thing that I thought was gonna happen is happening. Everything from the camps, everything from the vaccines, everything from, you know what I mean? The, you know, just everything, all the theories that we've all talked about or you've heard about or anything like that, you know, they were all happening. The zombie apocalypse is here. We are in the zombie apocalypse. And all these people are zombies. and. You know, there's a lot of zombies in the world, and you don't, you know, you, I know you're not a zombie because if you're still deep into this video, you've been watching so far up until now, you're definitely not a zombie. Um, but you can see everyone around you being zombies. Look, there's zombies all around here too. But again, the zombies out here don't really affect me. You know what I mean? Zombies where you're living, they affect you directly, they affect you on a, you know, minute to minute basis all right and so you're, you're out here and all of a sudden it's like a lot less zombies but again it doesn't even matter because the point i'm making is that you know all of these zombies that are all over the world at the moment you know they are going to make themselves uh extinct you know what i mean they're dead they're already gone and most likely they're just going to be the first ones in line to get this medication to get this stuff and they're going to be out and uh for all of you guys out there that are surviving you know that are going to survive the zombie apocalypse you know you guys want to make sure um that there's uh you know what is it up 
light at the end of the rainbow or whatever. And, and, I, and I'm here to tell you and assure you that there is, you know, uh, from many fronts. Again, you know, you, you can just look at the rest of my channel so you guys can see. I'm sure you, most of you guys have, that watch me for a long time, you guys already know this. I talk about it a lot. I'm going to be talking about it way more as we go on in the future here. Um, and uh, for all of you new viewers out there, you know, again, you know, welcome, you know, welcome to the other, the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to be totally fine, guys. For reals, you know, there's nothing to worry about. But you know, the reality is that you got to start making some changes. It's uh, you know, right now, you know, a lot of parts of the world are turning into communist China, and if you have, you know, or, or Nazi Germany or some form, shape, you know, something of that ilk, and if you have the ability, you know, to get out of that situation, then you need to do so. You need to, you know, um, you know. Buckle up, you know what I mean? Tighten your fucking seatbelt, you know, your belt or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, grab your balls and just do it. Just fuck, just, that's it. Just do it. So just, just do, do it. it. Okay, that's it. Just do it. Okay, just fucking do it. Okay, that's what you need to do, right? Just do it. And that's the thing, you know what I mean? Just, just do it. And uh, if you just do it, you'll be totally fine. I promise you, you know what I mean? But if you don't do it, then you're going to be in big trouble. And again, the hardest part, the most difficult step is that first step, okay? Which is making that decision, okay, I'm leaving, all right? Then the second hardest step, okay, is actually looking for, you know, a ticket. You know what I mean? Finding that ticket. You get what I'm saying? Finding your way out. Finding an Airbnb at your next location abroad. Um, packing your bags, minimizing your life, getting rid of all the crap and bullshit you don't need and stuff like that. In fact, that's like the most difficult thing. For a lot of you guys, you know, that, See, look, most people out there, they have very little. You guys think that you guys have it the hardest to get out. The reality is, is like actually the more crap and stuff you have and the more attachment you have, the harder it is for you to leave and get rid of all your shit. But if you got nothing, it's so easy for you to get the fuck out because I left with $1,500 to my name and just like three suitcases full of crap, all right? And now I'm sitting here pretty two and a half years later and you can do the same, all right? Um, but it, because I really didn't, it was easy. I was already minimized, you know, already li living, uh, you know, again, I was already, uh, you know, just a few moments away from living on the street, living out of my car, living in a jail cell, any one of these things. Um, so it was very, my, my, my life was already minimized to the max. And so a lot of you guys, I know a lot of you guys are in a very, very, very similar situation in a very, very similar boat. And, uh, and that's the thing, you know what I mean? You guys have the power to better your life and get the hell out of Dodge. You know, um, for you guys that have a lot of attachment, you know, they have like, let's say a high paying job, or you have something like a, um, um, you get, you get like, like, a, like a home and you got like a lot of stuff and all of these attachments, you are gonna find it the most difficult to leave because it's, it's uh, you know, wanting to minimize and get rid of all that stuff and then move it over here. A lot of you guys, you know, are reaching out to me and say, hey, how can I move everything over here? And you can. It's just very difficult and very expensive. And um, there are other options. There are many, many options, okay, um, for you. But again, you guys are fine. You know, again, the, the, the less you have, the, the easier it's actually going to be for you, okay? And, and most of you guys are just worried about income. Again, you need very little to live out here. You need $1,000 or less. And again, if you're willing to really risk a lot, you know, risk it all, I mean, again, you need, you don't need that much, okay? Rent, I, pay, I have a two bedroom home, okay? With a ginormous patio, a ginormous, you know, front, you know, um, living room, a ginormous kitchen and a ginormous backyard, and I pay 350 bucks for everything, 400 bucks for everything. That's light, internet, um, water, the house, everything, all right? Everything. All right, but yeah, I got added expenses. We all got added expenses, but again, all right, you can already start figuring out what my expenses are and see that they're not that much. They don't add to that much, okay? And uh, how, how many of you guys can even say that? You know, most of you guys are, how, how much is your car payment? How much is your insurance? How much is your, your, your mortgage? How much is your rent? How much is your, your, your everything, okay? And, um, like I said, you know, a lot of you guys need to start making decisions, you know, um, that are help, going to help you facilitate your move out. Okay, instead of, uh, you know, getting more ingrained and dug into the system, you need to figure out a way to get out of the system. Okay, in order to get out of the matrix. Okay, again, you know, all of these things that, you know, you have all, only you have the power to do, but you got to do it. And, uh, and that's the thing. I mean, the reality is, is that the main reason I left the United States of America okay was for freedom 
okay? And, um, and that freedom comes in many shapes and forms, okay? And it came in the fact that like literally freedom, you know, where I can be free, okay? Um, freedom in the sense of like, um, you know, on the cost, you know, of everything, you know, I can buy, I can go to the grocery store and not have to worry about, um, you know, um, what is it counting every single thing in my grocery cart, you know, to make sure that I don't go over my budget. Um, the freedom of uh, being able to do what I love for a living, okay? The, and I can go on and on, okay? So many freedoms, all right? And um, and again, you know what I mean? Like all of this always comes down to that, you know what I mean? The fact that most of us just want to be left the fuck alone, which is well, most of us just want to live a regular life. Look, let me tell you a little something that happened in my neighborhood literally yesterday. The light went out, all right? And uh, here where I live, we've already been through two hurricanes. We've already been through a lot of uh, crazy shit. And uh, we never had even the light go out. We never had any power outage. We never had any problem like that. But um, again, last night, yesterday, um, the transformer blew, which that happens in your neighborhood. That can happen in any neighborhood at any, any point in time. It just happens. The transformer blew. Um, when the transformer blew, again, you know, everyone came out and uh, started to figure out. We started calling the power company. We all got together. And look, man, long story short, we all became a community. Now, first of all, we were already a community. Don't get it twisted. I forget to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, I, every, every, everywhere that I've lived in the U.S., I, I never knew my neighbors. Ever since I've been in Mexico and every place that I've lived, I've always known my neighbors. I already knew my neighbors. All right? But after, you know, the power went out and we were all, like, on the street and chatting and talking and, you know, hey, I got no phone, you know, uh, what is it, no power on my phone. Hey, oh, my God, the shit in my fridge. Can I put it over in there? All these things, all of a sudden, like, we just really, really realized, well, at least I did, the people that live here already know because they live like this, you know. They live in a community. And I realized, holy shit, I am in a real community that we lost power. Okay, um, and things were really shitty here, but because we all had each other, all right, it wasn't shitty at all. In fact, me and Christian had one of the most wonderful nights last night, and the power didn't come back on until like past 12.30. Basically, the power went out at 12.30 noon, we didn't get power till 12.30 at night, and we had an amazing time, an amazing night, where, you know, we were actually even thinking about, you know, now I was especially thinking about the fact how, how this would be in the U.S., how much stress, how much of a problem, how much, you know, all of the, you know, just the power going out was such a fucking, like, again, like a, like a monkey wrench, you know, thrown into your whole day. Or out here, it was just more like, eh, you know, whatever, you know, thank God that we at least, you know, have what we have. Thank God that, you know, we don't have to worry so much. Thank God that we don't have to, you know, all, you know, again, just thinking about, what most people have to deal with, you know, when this is a, like a real situation. The fact that, you know, we got community. The fact that, you know, we were all very friendly and um, happy and, you know, just being very neighborly. And the fact that we were already very, very neighborly. Another reason why I love living in Mexico and I enjoy it here so much. Uh, and again, another part, another advantage of living abroad. Again, you know what I mean? It was even more enhanced after a little bit of a mini crisis in which I realized, holy shit. What an advantage this is, you know what I mean? To really, you know, being in a real community. So to recap pretty much everything I've been talking about here, you guys need to figure out how to bust out of the matrix, okay? Um, like I said, you know, you can be watching tons of videos as to why I left the US, but the reality is, is that you are realizing after many videos, not just my videos, but other people's videos you want on the subject that it's basically the same old thing you know the same reason why you're looking to leave is the same reason that i decided to leave and everybody else decided to leave you know when one shape form or another um like I, one of the things that i do out here now is that i help people transition into living out here and uh one of the things that i realized in like the last like several weeks is that you know I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people out here that it doesn't matter what their political leaning is you know very ultra left ultra right in the middle but it doesn't matter at the end of the day we're all human and we're all the same and we're all looking for the same thing and um you know most people you know once you wake up okay it doesn't really matter what your <clears throat> your political or ideology or any of that shit is you know you can actually talk so you know to, to the other person you know meaning if you're you know you know if you're pretty self-aware and you're again on the left you can talk to people all the way on the right and if you're on the right, you can talk to people all the way on the left. And if you're in the middle, you can talk to both and so on and so forth. But 
you know, one of the main reasons why a lot of us are, you know, have been looking to get out of Dodge is because we've lost that. The, the ability to talk with each other, the ability to have conversations, the ability to, you know, get together and fix things. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that are leaving that are on the very left, you know, they are leaving because they have been, again, pushed out of their own party, you know, where they, you know, have, real, have realized that no matter what, um, you know, what they're doing or saying, I mean, it's never left enough. The ideology has gotten so strong, has gotten so fierce that it has not allowed people. And one second, yeah, sorry about that. Gizmo, ven para Yeah, see again the same old thing. You know what I mean? I just had like I don't even know what the fuck I was saying, but I just had like some people out here, you know, just telling me about the fucking anti-virus shit. You know what I mean? Like. Get the fuck out of my neighborhood. Get the fuck out the front of my house. You know what I mean, it's a, that's again the big difference between a living in a place like this. You know, they can you know uh, go door to door trying to push this shit out here on people, and the people will literally be telling them what I'm telling them. Get the fuck off my property, all right? Where you cannot be doing that wherever the fuck you are in your first world country, and that's a sad reality, all right? You know, I got the freedom and the liberty to do whatever the fuck I want out here, all right? Despite. All right, what uh, a local government might be trying to do or impose or, or whatever on me. Um, where again, most of you guys, the reason you're looking to be on a place like this is because you have lost that and you're afraid that you are not going to be able to get out in time. And um, the sad reality is that for some of you, it might be too late, but I think that for everybody, you guys have plenty of time to get out. Gizmo, don't be barking. Thank you. There's <laughs> another dog out there. But, um, Again, guys, you know, let's get into a, like a quick little plug, okay? Um, the sponsor for today's show is a puppy pound that's uh, out there. No, no, <laughs> the, the sponsor is me. I am sponsoring today's show. So please, if you want more information on living specifically in Merida, Mexico, for living in the Yucatan, living in this part of Mexico, please re check out my website, joseatiaga.com. Ah, sorry, all those dogs that were barking outside. It's all the people's, uh, you know, homes, you know what I mean? That these uh, COVID, and COVID, you know, inspectors are coming up, you know what I mean? To, uh, you know, all the dogs are, you know, again, this is another, again, again I got my dog out here, you know what I mean? To just, you know, if, if, if me saying get the fuck out of my property isn't enough, a big dog running towards you and barking really loud is also helps, okay? And that's the same thing that's happening. A lot of people's houses right now, because I just took a peek, took a smile, and all that shit. But anyways, as I was saying before I got rudely interrupted, please check out joseadiaga.com, okay? Here it is. Here, in fact, yeah, I can do it here. Right, look, there you go. So as you guys can see here on the website, here's the website, and on the website up here, I got, you know, all kinds of services, you know, free, you know, services. I'm moving out here to Medina, Mexico. Um, and, and all these other things that I got, okay, on the website. Plus, I got, you know, um, all the videos, okay? All the videos are here, so check out all the videos, all right? Um, but like I said, guys, you know what I mean? Um, you don't have to move out here. There's plenty of places around the world, plenty of places that are amazing in Latin America, in Mexico, in Eastern Europe, in Africa, in uh, in Asia, okay? Um, and, and, and that can go on and on, okay? You just gotta go out there and look for them and dig for them and go out and adventure and start living your life because, uh, you know, before you know it, you're not going to have much of a, of a life to live. And, uh, and again, you know, I'm telling you guys now, you know, go travel, go do all these crazy things. But the reality is, is because uh, the reality is, is that what, we, what, the, what the point that we are in right now, we might not, you know, be able to fucking freely travel the way we used to for a very long time. And that's a reality. And so this is not more of a travel, like go out there and sow, sow your oats type of thing. But this is more like a, you know, if you have not been woken up, so yet by everything that's going on, you better start waking the fuck up and you better start, you know, finding a way out the door. All right. You better start doing what you need to do in order to get the hell out of Dodge. Because as you guys already know, it doesn't matter who wins the election. Does whatever country you're in, it doesn't really matter what's kind of going on politically. You already know everything is going down the shit or everything is going downhill and it's Again, each day is, is only getting faster and faster and it's gonna get even more and more difficult for you to leave. So you need to start figuring that out now. And um, that's what this channel is for, okay? So just now let's come full circle. This channel is now gonna start being dedicated, okay? To my life out here as an expat, you know, meaning, you know, all the tips and tricks that you need, you know, everything about, you know, taxes, you know, um, 
uh, you would, how to diversify yourself and uh, you know um, hedge against the dollar. You know whether it's buying gold, Bitcoin, uh, silver, um, property. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like uh, art. You know what I mean? It, there's many, many, many things. You know what I mean? Uh, that you can do uh, to diversify yourself and help you. You know what I mean? Uh, maintain your wealth, help grow, help grow your wealth, and so on and so forth. Um, also, you know what I mean? Like on this channel, again, you know, where I'm gonna show you, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna talk about, you know, all of the things, you know what I mean, that um, you might be needing going forward, right? In order to really, you know, uh, make this transition as easy as possible because there's a lot of things, you know what I mean? There's a lot of things, you know, there's things like culture shock, learning the language, banking, and I could go on and on, right? Many, many, many things that you um, are gonna need tips on. Now, if you want specific tips on living in Merida, Mexico, living in Mexico, then check out my travel channel, okay? And there you'll get to see more specifics on living here. This channel is gonna be talking about, again, expat stuff, okay? Like what it is to be an expat, okay? The whole thing that comes with that, okay? Um, in my other channel, we're gonna be talking more specifically about living out here and being out here and all the things about the make awesome, the make Mexico awesome, the make many the Mexico awesome, and everything that's happening out here. We talk more, you know, in depth about things like that. Again, on this channel, we talk about politics, we talk about you know all the things that I mentioned and so on and so forth. And we're gonna keep talking about that, right? Um, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't get it twisted. We're gonna be talking about all these things, but you know, I got many channels. Again, as you guys can see, you know, from my website, I got a lot of content that I create and I make for you guys. So. Again, guys, I think this has been a long enough episode. Um, we talked about many things, um, but as you guys already know, martial law is already here. Um, they've already, you know, Trump signed this thing called the Defense Protection Act, okay? Um, uh, that, again, has already made everything to communism. Uh, the, the, the Dow Jones, the stock market, um, the biggest shareholder of the stock market is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is printing into oblivion. The Federal Reserve also owns, has been has taken over the treasury. Um, and I can go on and on, all right? FEMA camps are right around the corner. Um, you know, Marshall, like again, you know, law and order is knocking on your door um, for whatever reason, you know, they want to talk to you. And, uh, and I can go on and on, guys, you know what I mean? It's not looking good, it's not looking pretty, and now is your time to act, okay? Because if you have not acted yet, you're not gonna have much time left to act, all right? So please, get to work, all right? Before it's really too late, all right? So, guys, you already know the deal. If you like this kind of content, all you gotta do is please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell like on, but more importantly than anything else, if you, want to know more check out the website because on the website you're going to really get to see everything and anything you know all the things that i do so again don't forget to stay awesome thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, we got many more like this coming hope you guys like the green screen awesome right look at this look at this i'm in the thing now look at that how awesome is this talk to you later